Yes, indeed, Lord, this morning we worship you, we give you thanks and praise. And as I bring forth your word, I pray that, Lord, you may use me and that everyone who has come here, including me, will not live here the same way that we have come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're good this morning. Thank you very much for inviting me, Reverend Kamodo, to uh, bring the word of God to you. He's one man who pushes me to uh, great uh, places which I've never been before. And so this is one of them. <laughs> My name is George Njuguna. Um, I am born again, and uh, I love the Lord so much. I serve as a lay reader at All Saints Cathedral, uh, but from Monday to Saturday, I still serve the Lord. I run an online radio, and uh, that is what I do from Monday all the way to Saturday. So because I'm a radio person, allow me to start telling you a story. We are learning about the king, right? Christ the king, that is the topic. But I've changed it a bit to suit someone else, or rather about someone who the story that we've learned from Matthew and even Ephesians that we are going to talk about them. And the story is the dumpster salmon. Now, uh, I've had one of the shortest and most memorable uh, stories uh, or sermons, but this was not from the pulpit, uh, but from beside a dumpster. Now, this guy pulled up a uh, a semi uh, behind a convenience store. This must be in the States to grab some coffee. And as he uh, climbed out of his truck, a woman walked up to him. Uh, her face was burned uh, to something deep brown because, and uh, she had uh, stained jeans and sockless shoes and weary eyes. Basically, a chokora. Chokora showed up on, on, uh, on him. And then she said, Sir, uh, I hate to bother you, but can you help me? Now, pointing over her shoulder, uh, she said the, her husband was in the dumpster, and they were hungry, and the husband was looking for food. So she said, can you give me food? Can you go buy for us something as the store while you're buying your coffee or whatever you're doing? Now, he came out a few minutes later. Uh, and so the husband, of course, she called. She called him. And they were standing beside their truck. Meaning, they had faith that this guy was going to give them something to, to eat. So the guy handed them uh, two sandwiches. Uh, two sandwiches um, and then the man took them and handed them to his wife and straight out his hand and shook the guy. And uh, this is what stood out for me. He says, thank you, sir. Thank you so, so much. We don't have hardly nothing. Just, uh, he just goes, yeah, they had just gotten into the, the town a few nights ago and you are sleeping under the bridge. But this is what he said, and it ties into Jesus as the king. He says, Jesus has been good to me, by the way. He says, he always provided. And he says, I thank him again. And they walked out of his life. Of course, the guy who had bought them. But... Um, he never forgot the story and the gratitude. The guy had no address. He had no car. 
he had no saving account and was just about to eat food from a dumpster or a takataka place. But this is what he told him and stuck with him. Jesus has been good to us that way. Now, let me begin with uh, Paul in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Paul is giving thanks to the Ephesians because of their faith, uh, that the faith they have in Jesus and the love they had for God's people, just like this guy who met the dumpster. Now, he lets them know that uh, he has uh, prayers for them, that God may give them wisdom and revelation so that they may know him better. Also, that, their eyes, that the eyes of their hearts may be enlightened so that they may know the hope which they have been called, which is riches for the glorious inheritance and his incomparably great power for believing in God the Father. Now, when we talk about power, we see what God will do when he comes and separates us uh, as the sheep and the goats. Turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you a sheep or are you a goat? Who has said that they are a sheep? Their neighbor is a sheep. Yeah. <laughs> I am boozy. Where is boozy, Brian? Now, you know, we always use very bad words. Kondo uh, ewe. Today we learn how important and good kondo in Akuanga. Now, <laughs> the sheep obey without uh, any issues, and they can be easily guided, while the goat is the opposite. My mom has uh, a sheep, Iya uh, Kukamuliwa, and so the other day it gave birth to two. Uh, what are they called? Kids. No, a lamp is a sheep. Um, I mean the goat. Yes, I mean the goat. Yeah, it's a kid. And uh, they are very jumpy. Unless they are contained in a certain place, they can be everywhere. We also have dogs. German shepherds. Those who know German shepherds, you know what they can do. And these are very small uh, kids, so that means they can be easily eaten in a few uh, minutes. But back to the Matthew scripture, we see God separating those who are obedient and those who are not. The sheep to the right, the goats to the left. Now, what are the characters of a sheep? Number one, I see they are caring. And if you can move, open with me, because I can see most of you have uh, uh, Bibles. Uh, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 35a, or rather the first part. Uh, we see a caring person. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink, meaning they were also welcoming. Um, I was a stranger and you invited me. That is the second part where we see uh, a welcoming person. In verse 36, we see a third character, which is being compassionate. And it says, I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was ill and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. How many of us are con were confirmed on Friday and are here? Uh -huh. It's only one. There are two. Where is the second one? Ah, good. So 
whatever happened to you on Friday was not because now that you have permission to come and drink and eat something from this table. <laughs> this is what you're called to do. And all of us who are confirmed, that is what our calling is. We're supposed to go out and reach out to people. Not just our family members, but those who we meet around and we see their entire need of something. And that is what, that is how the goats are separated from the sheep. So when someone calls you any condotena, mwambie tu asanti. Sindio? Akikuita mbuzi ndi ujiulize maswali mingi. Ujiulize maswali mingi. Now he tells the sheep, uh, he tells them uh, to take um, the, sh the sheep rather to take the inheritance the father has prepared for them since the creation of the world. Meaning from the beginning God had an end plan for us. So when we are born or before we were born, God had good plans for us. And the plans is that when we do the good things to others, we are doing it to the Lord. And that is what he so desires of us. Now, there are two applications which I want to draw you to. Uh, and this, one of them is the story about Jesus, the king. He came as a harmless baby, uh, born in a manger. I tried to find out what Nazareth or Galilee looked like, and it was very interesting. At some point in John chapter 7, they disgrace people from Nazareth, uh, from Galilee, uh, where Jesus uh, came from. And so my question is, are you expecting the king in your life? Or are you expecting him to come back and joining him in heaven? He will tell you to come to the right and not to the left because to the left was something else. So are you serving God's people? Ask yourself this question even as we go home or as we go through this service. Um, where has God called you as you serve him? Where has God called you as you serve him? I talk to Kevin almost every week or twice a month. And most of the time he tells me he's coming from a pastoral visit. I've never asked him if he goes alone. Now I'll ask you, do you join him to go for pastoral visits? Or you think, you're, or you think this uh, two gentlemen and the lady are the ones who are supposed to take him? Go with him. Go and learn. Go and serve God that way. It's not because of, just because of these people. It's all of us. Hapa wamesema, umesikia kitu kwa Matthew 25 wakisema pastors? Hapana. Ama leirida? Hapana. Ni sisi wote tutaitwa kondo ama nini? Ama mbuzi. <laughs> so let us think about that and go out and serve. There's so much we can do uh, as long as we have given our lives to Christ. Now, what character is God shaping you to be? In this case, is it a goat which he wants you to be? Or do you want the devil to come in so that you become uh, a goat, not a sheep? And... Uh, the story of uh, the sheep and the goats, we are looking at a man who has, or a man or a woman, who has been redeemed and saved. And uh, a casual reading into this uh, sermon seems to suggest that salvation is, a res is, a re is the result of good works. Now, the sheep acted very charitably. It gave food, it gave drink, and even clothing to the needy. The gods showed no charity. It seems to result in salvation for the sheep and damnation for the gods. 
Now, the good works mentioned here are not the cause of salvation. Let's separate those two things. But it is as an effect of it. It is your daily life. It is how you carry yourself every day. It is not what has made you become saved. Those are two different things. Now, good works will result from our relationship with our shepherd. And who is our shepherd? Who is our shepherd? Good. Um, the core message of the sheep and the goats is that God's people will love others. Good works will result from our, with, from our relationship to the shepherd. Followers of Christ will treat others in the opposite uh, manner. And uh, here we have the second part, which is the goat. I don't know if it was uh, Brio or the lady Amekanaendialikuambuzi. <laughs> but I know Brio is a kind man. I hope he still is. <laughs> The, the, the last time I saw him, he was a kind man. I hope he still is. But, but, the, but the goat in this sense, I can only hear the ladies. So it seems <laughs> there's something you're doing there. I can't hear any male voice saying anything good about you. But this is what the goat did the opposite of what the sheep did. And you know, the, the result of it is that for them, they have a place in hell. And I like what it says. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of these, you did not do for me. Then you will go away to eternal punishment, by the righteous, but the righteous to eternal life. And that is just it. There is nothing else we can do. Now, every time we think about the dumpster guy, uh, it's, it's a reminder that wisdom lacks in the outer places. Rich gratitude uh, among the impoverished Uh, forgotten. Jesus has been good to us. Has he been good to you? Can you be good to someone else? That is what he's expecting of you. You know it can only cost you 50 bob or 100 bob to buy someone something to eat or to buy them a cloth, a piece of cloth and it goes a long, long way. That might be your only ticket to get to heaven and being called Kondor. Cindy. <laughs> um, it also reminded me that God has friends in low places. Yeah? And I don't want to sound political here, so uh, let me just leave it at that. And in low places profound faith flourishes. You can imagine how a chokora will give God thanks to you for what you have done to him that day. That you've given him something to eat. You've given him a jacket to clothe himself away from this cold. And that that day he'll sleep soundly or he'll not fall ill because of anything. And from these low places um, resounds the voice of God from the lips of his people. I wonder if Ajokora came here, you will gladly invite him and let him come and sit down with you. Do good things. 
and allow God to use you in the best way possible. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we give you thanks and praise. Thank you for the lessons that you have taught us today that we need to feed those who are hungry. We need to visit those who are in prison. We need to visit those who are sick. And I pray that this day you will help us to keep that in mind and help us to grow more in you to do the good works that you have asked us to come and do. We give you thanks and praise. We honor you and we bless you. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Thank you.